wasn't ready for this. She couldn't have possibly been done with what she had to do. There was so much more that had to be done. And I don't know what I'm gonna do now. I've never been so unsure about my life. That was some of the most devastating news I have ever gotten. And so um, unexpected. But uh, I called the girl. And she told me um, what happened and how they found her in her apartment. And um, she had been there for a couple days, actually. And I was just freaking out. Like, it was just, it was just. I felt like everything that we had started building had come crashing down. Because she had had so much stuff up her sleeve that she had yet, you know, shared because she wanted to make sure that it was solid. On top of, I hadn't really lost somebody that close to me besides my grandmother, really. And my grandmother had passed the previous year and um, that was that was difficult because that was the only grandparent I knew so I call my dad my dad calls my mom I was kind of I was kind of blank on the drive home and I get home and my mother just starts crying and she's just like I'm not ready to die and it's like getting me all worked up and um, well that next day um, well I just want to say this taking it back when I saw the tweet I thought it was like a real messed up joke and so because I was supposed to be having a meeting with her that day at 2 o'clock anyway, I text her like, good morning. And when she didn't text me back, that's when I started freaking out. And then that's when I called the girl and then she told me what happened and things like that. So, um, so that next day at work, like, it was just zoned out completely. And I, um, like, I had these random breakdowns and um, and then I think maybe the next day I got a phone call from a girlfriend of hers um, who lives in London and her name is Victoria Wilson James and she was a recording artist back in the 90s actually and um, 
she also has an artist that she was working with as well. His name is James Follett. So um, she was kind of like the the English version of me and Devet, you know. And um, you know, she she gave me a bit of um. Uh, comfort you know she said you know just because she's not here in this dimension doesn't mean that she's still not working on our behalf and I also want to send a thanks to her and to Brian Slade for talking to me and just sharing their experiences and helping me deal with that as well as Erica because I called her and let her know what happened and she told me that you know She's not even going to attempt to try and fill those shoes, but not to worry about anything because she has me because she said her world is fine and she don't play games and she told me that she's coming for me. So that, um, you know, I was finishing up my second, my second season of God's Trombones and, um, it was just really, it was just, it was just a blur, man. I, I just, I don't even, I can't even really explain where my mind was. You know, I've never, like I said, I never really lost somebody that close. Like that was really close to home for me. You know, like I've, I've known this woman since I was 16 and she's been very active in my life and just been able to help me with a lot of things at the time that my parents couldn't help me deal with you know because they couldn't view things objectively and things like that and so she really was a mediator um and anybody who got a chance to know her and um you know just experience her she she definitely um walked that life of excellence and of love and of understanding and things like that you know she didn't have to go around talking about she was a Christian she let the way she lived exude that example and um well, anywho I didn't get a chance to finish the last two shows of God's Trombones because we were going out to her funeral um out in LA her memorial service on April 11th and so me and my dad go and get out there, made a few phone calls to let folks know I was there. And so, anywho, <clears throat> we have the memorial service and I sang, and I sang a specific song. I sang Total Praise, the Total Praise cover that I have up on my other Let Us Pray page. And, um, and the reason I decided to sing that song was because Devette called me one day and she said that she saw that video. And she said, she, you know, I sang it the first way through and things like that. And, and then when I sang it, when I said, can I sing it one more time? And then she said, by the end of the video, she was just in tears, like she could not stop crying. And she said, it, that that video and what I did, it just made her realize um, that she needs to not worry about certain things and to know that God has things under control. And, you know, it's so funny that she would even say that because every time I would watch that video, I would cry. And I felt like God was using my gift to get through to myself when I would watch that and um, yeah and so I, I sang that for her and the fact that I could even be a blessing for her in any kind of way after all that she's done for me you know and believed in me and stood up for me and you know inspired me and just all those things like she just um, so the fact that I could do something for her you know it just that really made me feel good so I sang um, there was a few people that I met that she had been telling me about and telling them about me 
um, at the at the funeral at the at the memorial service, and then um, that that was a Monday. The next day, I just happened to be on Twitter, and I don't even know how this even came about. I'm I'm telling you, I'm on Twitter, and I might have been Amir um, from London that mentioned something about Erica being in LA. I text Erica like, are you in LA? And she's like, yeah. I said, oh my God, I'm in LA too. She said, oh really? Are you going to do Coachella? And I'm like, girl, what's that? Call me. Tell me what's going on. So she calls me, tells me what Coachella was, tells me what, um, whatever, you know, what was going on. I was like, oh my God. I'm like, we have to meet up. She's like, okay, well, I'll be, you know, um, you know, you can come by the hotel this evening. So I'm really just, you know, oh my God, oh my God, I'm about to meet her. Jesus, Jesus. So, go to West Hollywood, meet up at our hotel. And it was funny because the first time I told her, I said, the first time I see you, when I meet you in person, I'm going to lay at your feet and I'm just going to hit an A5. That's, that's all it's going to be. So, we park on the side of the hotel and I'm like, calling her and I'm like well where are you I'm like I'm outside I'm on the side of the hotel she's like really okay okay I'm coming I'm coming so I'm walking down the street and I see her and I see I just see this hat and all this hair and as soon as we see each other she just starts screaming in my ear and I'm like oh my god so I just ran up on her, I just gave her a big hug and a kiss and I'm like oh my god it's so good to see you and it was like it was like we had done this before you know because we had kept in contact on the phone but it was like actually meeting her and so my dad came along and you know I met I met the road manager and some other folks and she said that you know she had a few sessions at Flying Lotus's house so um, I, I was supposed to be leaving that next morning and so she asked my dad if I could stay for a couple of days and do Coachella and then they sent me home because she she wanted to you know just vibe with me and get you know just chill so he said, all right, <clears throat> even though I'm an adult, you know, so, um, I, um, I went and stayed over at my cousin Yanni's house and then I got dropped off at her hotel that, that afternoon. And it was funny because as soon as I got dropped off, there were these three girls walking into the hotel with me. And when Erica's assistant came down to get me, they went up too. It was King. And um, so we went up there and, you know, Erica was just chilling. And we got a chance to talk. They sang. Those girls can blend. Like, they sound like one voice. Like, it doesn't even make any sense. Um, and then I sang. Well, she... She she had me play window seats. Cause she said, How how you gonna record my song and make it ten times better? Like what's <laughs> you know. And so then I told her that there was this song that I wrote about her back in two thousand nine that I wanted to sing for her called Mothership. And so she sat on a little couch sofa thing, kinda like a footrest. And she was like three feet in front of me and I just put on the instrumental and I sang it and I've never had so many butterflies in my stomach doing so much all at the same time. Because here I am singing a song about someone who inspired me as a person and as an artist and they're right in front of me. Like this is not even at an award show. Like this is extremely intimate. And this is a definite reality for me. And especially when I saw her eyes water up, like it was just, it was just surreal for me. And when I finished, she just gave me a big hug and a kiss. I was like, I love you, son. Like, thank you. You know, and she said that I never would have thought that a, a little girl from South Dallas, Texas would affect somebody like that. She said, because I felt that. So, after King had to go, um, I stayed at, at um, 
in her um, in her hotel room. And the way these hotels are structured, when you come in, there's these long steps that go up to the second floor where there's a bedroom, and then right to your immediate right, there's a bathroom, and then there's another little bedroom, and that's where I was sleeping at. And like we sang together and you know just talked and you know I remember her telling me that um, I told her I said I I said I never had that many butterflies in my stomach ever singing for you like that she said and I hope they never leave and um, you know she took me out to where she was DJing at with Flying Lotus and that's when I met Thundercat because I've heard that name so much via Jay Davey and he knew who I was so um, and I remember one specific time after, you know, I left, um, um, she went back to find Lotus's house and, you know, I just went back to the hotel so I can, so I can sleep because my body was still on Cleveland time. It was like four o'clock in the morning. So she comes back, um, to the house, maybe like three o'clock and she's like, Duran, you sleep? And I'm like, no. And she's like, take your ass to sleep. And um, so maybe like 20 minutes later, um, I was gearing up to go back, you know, go to sleep. And um, she came in and gave me a kiss goodnight. And it was just like, I feel like I'm eight years old around her all the time. Like, it's just, I can't even deal. 